Good evening. I'm so glad you've joined us tonight for our midweek Bible study. There's a lot of things that are going on, but tonight I want to take just a few minutes. I want to challenge you tonight with God's Word, and then uh, after that, we have a few announcements that we want you to be a part of so that you can kind of know what's going on at First Landmark Baptist Church. But before we get started tonight, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just want to say thank you for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity we have to come before you. Father, I pray tonight that you would use your word to encourage us, to lead us, to guide us, and to help us to do better. That, Father, we may live a life earnest of knowing who you are. That, God, we would have uh, something inside of us that desires to follow you and to be more uh, intimate and in a relationship with you. God, help us to be your children and help us to do the work in which you've called us. It's in your name. Amen. Paul is concluding his letter to the church of Corinth. And as he's concluding his letter to the church of Corinth, there's a couple of things uh, that, that we see. Matter of fact, just so you know, it's not Corinth, it's Ephesus. Sorry, a lot of different sermons running through my head today. Uh, but long story short is, tonight we're going to be looking at the conclusion of Ephesus. And as, as we're concluding this letter to Ephesus um, in Paul's third journey, we come to realize that there's a couple of things that... that uh, we have to understand, and that is, is this, is the first thing that we have to understand is that Paul is, is, is now going to share with them what's going to happen uh, in this uh, time. It's unprecedented for them. Uh, they've seen Paul come multiple times to the city of Ephesus. He's encouraged them. He's shared with them God's word. He has seen people saved, lives changed. He's seen government officials lives converted to knowing Jesus. And now as um, he concludes, he, he wants them to understand that in Acts, um, he wants them to see in Acts 20, we're going to be looking at verses 32 through verse number 38. For some reason, my slides aren't working tonight, but that's okay. Uh, we'll get through it. Uh, but uh, we'll go verse by verse as we always do. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verses 32 through verse number 38. Let's read these words together. So now, brethren, I commend you to God, to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessity and for those who were with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when He had said these things, He knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing of all the words that he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. Notice verse 32. He says these words, Brethren, he is speaking to those that made up the church of Ephesus. He was speaking to those that they would know who, uh, who was uh, this message for. It was for those that were part of the the church. He wanted them to realize that these words that were fixing to be uttered were going to be some words that they were going to need in the days ahead. And notice what he says that he says, I commend you to God. Basically, he's saying, listen, I'm, I'm committing you to God. You've seen me physically. But what I want you to realize is this, is you're not going to see my face anymore. And I want you to realize that you're going to have to rely upon God. You're going to have to rely upon His mercy. Because, get this guys, I'm not going to be there to share with you any more about what Jesus has done and what He is doing. He says this, I, I commend you to God uh, and to the word of His grace. You know, the word of God's grace is an amazing word. All too often today, we, we look at, we want judgment. We want to make sure that we have punished people for what they've done and how they've treated us. But one of the things that we have to realize is this, is that if we are going to commend 
uh, to people to God and to the word of his grace, that means this is we're going to have to come to a point where we rely upon the word of God and the word of God is going to be what we follow. I want you to see something that when we look at the word of God, Paul gives us a couple of things. He says this, uh, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Guys, the word of God is here to build us up. All too often we look at the Word and say the Word tears us down, the Word depletes us, the Word uh, challenges us at the very core. But I want you to see this, is God wants to take us and He wants to make us into His image. He wants to shape us and to build us up to do the work in which He's called us to do. And the only way that that's going to happen is if we take the Word of God and learn to live by the Word of God. Too often... Too often we find it easier to live by our own volition rather than to live by the Word of God. Notice what he says this, which is able to build you up, but he also says in verse 32, which is able to give you an inheritance. Think about it. A lot of people like inheritance. You know, uh, matter of fact, inheritance is something that, that we know is a godly thing. It's something that we should want to leave people. But I want you to realize this, the inheritance that we're leaving behind today is a spiritual legacy, a legacy of following Jesus. Think back to your family. Did your family follow Christ? Did your family live for Jesus? Did your family do what, what, what was supposed to happen? or Did they live the way that they should have? Guys, one of the things that we have to realize is this, is that we live and, and we leave a spiritual inheritance for those that are behind us. Will they see that we were faithful in our following of God or that we just talked to talk, but we didn't walk the walk? Guys, I want my children and I want my church family and I want my community to see that Jesus is real and that he's relevant and that he is changing people's lives. He's given us an inheritance that is out of this world. He's given us an inheritance in heaven. Guys, I want you to realize today we're leaving a legacy behind. And the greatest way that we can live a legacy behind is to know and to have embraced the message of God's grace. He says this, uh, which you're built up, which you are able to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Who are those that are sanctified? Those that are saved. Guys, I want you to realize the inheritance that we leave literally has consequences behind it. The legacy in which we leave behind us is is what our children will see. Are they going to be sanctified? Are they going to be saved? Are they going to know Jesus? Or is it just going to be some religious mumbo-jumbo that they follow? Verse 33, Paul says, Brethren, I have coveted no one. You know, it's amazing today at what we covet. We, We want what other people have. Think about it. What do you want that somebody else has? And get this, what you have, somebody else wants. You know, sometimes we always look at the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener whenever we look at at what other people have. Guys, instead of wanting what other people have, why don't we water what we have? Why don't we invest in what we've got? I want you to realize today that Paul said, I have coveted no one. And he says the first thing that he's coveted is no one's silver. Were there people physically wealthier than Paul? Yes, absolutely. But what they lacked is this, is what they may have had in the bank, they did not have in that relationship with God. So whereas you can have all the money in the bank, you can also be spiritually bankrupt. And spiritual bankrupt people today have, have, have basically uh, uh, made foolproof that we worship money rather than we worship God. But Paul says, I didn't covet anybody's money. I didn't covet anybody's silver. I didn't covet anybody's gold. Uh, he said, I didn't covet no one's silver, no one's gold. But then he also goes on to not only the, the money, that the things that we would spend, but he also says the items that they had. He says, I didn't covet anyone's apparel. You know, have you ever looked at somebody's shoes? I, I, I like shoes, okay? I'm not going to lie. I like shoes. Um, I, you know, I know I shouldn't probably like Nikes, but I love Nikes. And uh, Air Jordans are one of my favorite shoes that I've never owned. But um, I, I've got my eyes on a, uh, on a pair. But at the same time, I want you to realize something. 
is that today more than ever, we need people that are not wanting what everybody else has when it comes to the apparel that we wear, but that we should be different. We shouldn't want what everybody else has. Notice what he says. I coveted no one's silver, no one's gold, no one's apparel. He says, you know. And then in verse 34, he says, you yourselves know. He wanted them to understand that, get this, he had a spiritual foundation. And his foundation wasn't to take what other people had. He wanted to do what he could with the gospel of Christ for the gospel of Christ. He didn't want anyone to see that he was out for what they had, but rather for what God had for them. You yourselves know this. You know that these hands have provided. Verse 34. These hands have provided. What did, they, what did Paul do? Paul was a tent maker. He worked, and yet he says, listen, my hands provided for my necessity and for those who were with me. Paul was vigilant about working. He was vigilant not only about the physical labor in which he did to support his lifestyle physically, but he was also about supporting people uh, that were outside of him. He didn't just support himself. Notice that he says, and those who were with me. There were people around Paul that were being changed. Their lifestyles were being challenged. And yet, you know, when people's lives were being changed and challenged, get this there was going to be some times that he was going to have to invest in other people. You know, is it easier to invest in people or do you want people to invest in you? I don't know about you, but I like to invest in people. But you know what? One of the things that I've realized is this, is sometimes it cannot be about me. It can't be about what I want, what I have, what I need, what I, you know, anything about I. It has to be about him. And notice that he says, I haven't done this, but he says in verse 35, verse 35, I have shown you in every way. I have shown you in every way by laboring like these. And who is he talking about when he says these? Remember, he's talking to the brethren. The church of Ephesus was a church that was reaching and touching and challenging people's lives. It was a church that was loving God and loving people and seeing the world uh, around them change. He says, listen, he says, I want you to see that you, I have shown you in every way by laboring like these, pointing to the other brothers, that you must support the weak. You must support the weak. I want to kind of dive off here for just a moment. Who is weak? You know, sometimes there are people that are financially don't have as much as we have. And we, we come to the point where we have to realize they're weak financially. And so what do we do? We have to realize that we have to invest uh, finances in them. But you know what? Another thing is, is that in order to support the weak, we have to realize this. There are some people that have time constraints. And as people have time constraints, sometimes they don't support people with time. Guys, I want you to realize some of the greatest things that you can give your kids is not, is not money, but it's time. It's spending time with them. It's letting them know that you care and that you want to invest in them. Guys, listen, the weak don't care about how much money we have. They want to know how much are we willing to invest in time in them and show them. You know, I, I'm not a very computer savvy guy. Matter of fact, this morning I messed up the OBS program that we're shooting this video through. And I, I want you to realize that I had to call Stephen and I had said, said, Stephen, hey man, listen, I need your help. Basically, what I was saying is, hey, Stephen, I'm weak in an area and I need your support. I need you to come help me with your time. But also, not only was it his time that I was looking at, I needed his talent. He is a, a guy that knows around computers, whereas I'm not very savvy. When we support the weak, we can't just say it's a financial investment. It's a timely investment. It's a talent investment. We need to remember this. God has given us all unique gifts in this body. And as he's all given us all unique gifts, then get this. We are support those around us that are weaker in other areas. Who are you supporting? Do you want people to support you always or do you support others? That's one of the biggest challenges I think we face. Paul was going to close what he was doing at Ephesus by letting them know the Lord said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You know, 
children don't understand that. Children don't understand that it's more blessed to give. Matter of fact, my, my daughter's already asking for things for Christmas and, and when we're telling her, no, you, 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 know, you need to make a list and you know, we'll, we'll check into those things. But I want you to realize this is what is the greatest part uh, of Christmas is the gift of Jesus Christ, right? And we've got to encourage our children that the greatest gift that they were ever given was this was that God gave something to them that they can have. And guys, you can tangibly have Jesus Christ in your life today. You can have peace of mind, peace of heart, in knowing that He loves you and He cares for you. And God sent His Son for you. See, God gave us the ultimate gift. He gave us what we could not get, what we did not earn, and what we do not deserve. He gave us eternal life through Jesus Christ. And yet He's told us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You've received Christ, but are you sharing Christ? You've received, but are you giving? Are you investing in others? Verse 36 says this, And when He had said these things, He knelt down. Paul was literally moved to his knees. He was literally moved to his knees. He knelt down. Verse 36 is probably one of my most favorite verses. And I say one of my most favorite verses. I have a lot of favorite verses. But it says that he knelt down and he prayed with them all. Think about this. What is one of the greatest things you can do for somebody? Is pray for them. Who in your life right now needs you to pray for them? Who in your life right now needs you to invest your time, your talent, your resources in them. Paul not only invested in the weaker brothers, he also prayed with them. Verse 37, it says, and they all wept freely. You know, amaze, imagine being in a setting where you could absolutely weep. You could absolutely share your heart. You could absolutely share what was going on in your life. Imagine what that would look like. It says, and then they fell upon Paul's neck. They were grabbing his neck. They were hugging him. Matter of fact, it says they were kissing him. I, I want you to know something about this, uh, about kiss. I don't want anybody kissing me. Okay, nobody kissing me. Um, matter of fact, Paul also told us in other areas, greet the brethren with a holy kiss. The word holy means to be separate. So therefore, uh, no. Mm -mm. But it says they kissed him. You know, in Middle East culture, it's okay to kiss each other on the cheeks. But we also realize this. It says they were sorrowing most of all for the words he had shared. What had Paul shared with them? Man, Paul had shared a lot with them. He had shared a lot with this church of Ephesus. He wanted them to know lots of things. Invest in others, love people, serve God. It's blessed to give than it is to receive. Verse 38 says that they sorrow because they would see him no more. And then they accompanied him to the ship. Next week, we're going to continue to look at Paul as he's on his way to Rome. What was going to happen in Rome? What was going to happen? And how was it going to happen? Well, we're going to continue even though we've ended Paul's third missionary journey, we're going to continue to follow Paul as we and see what's going to happen in Rome. You know, some of the greatest mission trips that you'll ever go on are sometimes closest to home. There's a couple of announcements that I want to give you, but maybe today you're here and you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You've never received the ultimate gift that He's given to you. Let me just share with you this. The Bible says this. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. Matter of fact, he says because of our sin, the wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you have eternal life today? If not, why don't you ask Jesus to come into your heart and life? Let me pray with you and then I'm going to give our church family some announcements. Father, we just say thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you. Father, help us that we may follow you, we may love you. And Father, if there's one here today that is crying out to you right now for salvation, I pray that they would receive it.
holy right now. Father, be with us. Amen. Tonight, the announcements that I want to give you are just simple. This Sunday morning at 1030, we're going to have our worship services here at First Landmark. We would love for you to join us, whether you join us via YouTube, Facebook, um, or live and in person, we want you to come and be a part of our worship services. That You can find those services at either on YouTube or on our church Facebook account uh, Sunday morning at 1030. At 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, we're going to have a family class, once again, down in our student center. We encourage and invite all families to join us in our, um, in our student center for this time of learning more about God's Word. I look forward to that time as I will be teaching uh, from 10 to 1025. We will then go into the sanctuary and worship with our church family. Make sure you wear a mask into uh, the classroom as well as out of the classroom as you're walking in the hallways. Um, also, we're looking at on the 25th, Sunday the 25th, that we will have a family night here at First Lamar Baptist Church. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Uh, we're going to be having some campfires built, and if you want to bring s'mores or hot dogs for your family, you're more than welcome to do that. The church will not be providing any of that uh, at this time. So uh, we encourage you we, to come join us for a night of fellowship and worship. Uh, one more thing is that tonight, uh, or sorry, this Sunday night, uh, we're going to have our, um, our uh, family meeting. Uh, and our family meeting will take place uh, at, at 5 o'clock in the evening. Uh, I will be here on campus of the church, and anybody that wants to join me on campus is more than welcome to. We will also have a Zoom link uh, for anybody that wants to video in on that. Uh, we will, uh, Sharon will be sending out an email with the link to that um, on Friday. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. God bless you, and have a good week. Bye-bye.